following program on Ada Verna 24 is classified for general audience. It is intended for all ages. It contains little or no violence, no strong language, and little or no sexual dialogue or situations. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Hello and welcome to another episode on Gen XYZ and this is a program as you all know talk about youth related topics or issues. Now, this is a program for all the youngsters out there who wants to become a pilot. So I'm pretty sure, like at a young age, you all would have wondered, like while seeing a plane on air, what would it be like to, you know, be up there and look down at the land we stand? So today on the show, we're going to talk about people who have had that experience firsthand and also for the people who have ambitions of becoming pilots here in Sri Lanka as well. So with that introduction, I would like you to be introduced to Mr. Chandram Ratnam, who is the Hello. chairman of Asian Aviation Centre and also the founder of Lion Air. Thank you, sir, for joining me on the show today. Lovely. And also we have uh, Mrs. Nihara Jayathilika, who is the managing director of AAC, and also Dhananjaya Veera Singh, the head of quality assurance at AAC. Thank you so much for all of you all for taking the time to join me on the show. Our pleasure. I'm pretty sure, sir, you're not a new face on camera. People probably know you. You don't need an introduction. You're a famous film director as well here in Sri Lanka. So I'm honored to have you as well. Thank you. To uh, start off our discussion, I want to know a little bit about Asian Aviation Center and how it started, what your passion was, the story behind of you finding this uh, center. Yeah, actually the start of, of, of Asian Aviation Center is, is quite interesting because as a, as a young guy I wanted to always, uh, I, had, I had a love for aviation. I loved to watch the planes take off. I would even get my driver, to, my father's driver to drive me all the way to Ratmalana when I heard a plane was landing. Those days there weren't that many planes landing. So that type of passion was there. And then I made a movie uh, in, in Candy called uh, uh, Iron Triangle. And I uh, hired four helicopters from the Air Force. And they used to fly from Ratmalana to uh, Candy every day for the shoot. So I thought that's, uh, and I was living in Candy. I thought I must also hitch a ride. And I started going home every night, being with my family and getting up in the morning and going with the, with the helicopter. So I fell in love with helicopters. So now the whole thing was I had to have a helicopter. <laughs> and that's how it all started. So I went and bought, uh, I, I uh, went to buy a helicopter and then I found that it's so expensive. I could not afford it. Then uh, I started talking to my friends about aviation and an uh, American friend of mine and I got together and started Lion Air. We went to Kazakhstan and uh, places, brought aircraft here and we, we uh, started the first domestic airline in Sri Lanka. Uh, first scheduled domestic airline in Sri Lanka. And we operated that for a long time and then in the process I still wanted a helicopter. So one day I saw a helicopter at Ratmalana in a hangar. I said, whose helicopter is that? And they said, uh, 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 some person and I think they want to sell it. So I went and tapped on his door and said, hey, you want to sell it? <laughs> and uh, I, I bought the company and I, and the funny thing is, I thought I was buying a company with one helicopter, but I found that there were two helicopters. So I've been very lucky. And then we, we uh, uh, incorporated that with Lion Air and we had a very good successful run. We were doing 14 flights a day. This airport has never seen a buzz like that. According to Ray Vijay Wardner, who, who wrote a lovely letter to me saying that this airport has never buzzed like that. 14, 14 flights a day is a lot. Yeah. Colombo Jaffna, Colombo Jaffna. And then, of course, then we had, then we had the flying school there. And uh, we, then we uh, tied up with Kingston University. And uh, uh, we, have a, we have affiliation there. And we've been with them for 20 years. We have students uh, do two years with us here and one year in, in, uh, in Kingston. I think she, she will tell us more about the school 
But uh, I'm still looking forward to having another airline again. Uh, this time a regional one, coming very soon. Wow, I'm pretty sure most of us will be looking forward to that in the near future. So as uh, Mr. Chandran said, Mrs. Niara, what do you think about the engagement of students? Now, uh, Asian Aviation has been operating for the past few decades. Uh, 38 years. 38, 38 years, years, actually, exactly. yes. So how do you see the progress when you all initially started and to now, up to date? Um, I think initially it started with a, with a bang um, because there was nothing available in the island and then um, we st we added you know the AME which is called the aircraft maintenance engineering then uh, the Kingston program which was aerospace aerospace engineering of course the flying school has always been here and uh, so I we we are the uh, probably the only academy that that gives you and gives the whole package that is the flying cum the engineering and the aerospace engineering now aerospace engineering they seem to a uh, lot of people have this misconception that um, aerospace means it's only about space and aircraft and spacecraft and all that no it's a design program where you can deviate into other areas of design it's, it's a very wide area so we basically touch on all areas of aviation and outer space as well. All right. So I think the students who are watching this, the young people who are watching this, need to get an elaborate idea about what this course is about and what they can learn. Because when they think about aviation, they just think, okay, it's piloting, it's about flying only. But I think, Ms. Dananja, you can explain a bit more about what students should expect uh, when they join this course. Yes, exactly. As you say, most of the students uh, in, in the context of Sri Lanka, they think uh, when it comes to flying, that is, you have to become a pilot to be in the aviation profession. But it has a lot of, lot of other areas. Right? We have to maintain aircraft, so there you need uh, engineers, you need technical staff, then you have to have uh, air traffic controllers, then you have to have regulators, people who are in the uh, civil aviation authorities. A uh, lot of other uh, professions are found in aviation, not just pilots. So we at Asian Aviation Centre are of course unable to cater to all the segments, but we are concentrating on pilot training, engineering training and uh, technical technician training. So that has been going on for uh, many years now. We have produced uh, not only Sri Lankan pilots, uh, Sri Lankan technician, we have uh, uh, trained uh, regional students as well. We Mo did, uh, I think, Air Force also. If yes, I mean. yes. Uh, twice we did uh, training of uh, Air Force cadet, pi cadet pilots. Uh, and we have a lot of Maldivians coming in uh, to get the training, both as pilots, then as uh, engineers uh, with, uh, with a degree qualification, uh, plus uh, the technical qualification by getting the aircraft maintenance license. For that we have a program uh, uh, to cover the syllabus so that students can learn, sit for exams and get the aircraft maintenance license. So in those areas uh, we are specializing and we have been uh, helping the Sri Lankan uh, students as well as regional students to uh, realize their dream of uh, aviation careers. Mm -hmm. That's right. I and, mean it's uh, important. Occasionally there are students joining air, air traffic control uh, profession as well because uh, the main entry qualification is uh, degree. So our degree students we have had uh, joining uh, as uh, air traffic controllers as well. So we are proud of our achievement and uh, proud uh, that uh, we can we, 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 we have had some significant uh, contribution to uh, careers in aviation of uh, Sri Lankan students. Yeah, that's that's very yeah. important. Not only know. that, I think we, we make a very significant uh, contribution towards the economy as well because most of our uh, students are out there in, um, in the Middle East, in Africa and so on. And, uh, you know, they, they contribute so much towards the economy because they send back the, the, the money to their parents and families. So, um, we have a very, very, uh, very illustrious alumni who's working yes. in Emirates, um, affiliated to Boeing, NASA, um, Etihad and uh, all, those, uh, all those companies. 
um, so if you go to i think you had a you had a nice experience in in dubai or something when you were flying yeah i was telling them this i was getting off the plane and the stewards some people down there attending to the aircraft started waving and shouting at me saying aac aac <laughs> and i looked down and there's a rapi school eh aac aac that is you know, that's a thrill yeah so that and is uh, one one thing you have to understand is uh, aviation is unlike uh, many other fields uh, we cannot uh, have our own standards most of the standards are international standards so when you now even if you take our degree program what we offer is from kingston university and they are responsible to maintain the standards to a particular european standards and our flying training uh, the syllabus is from uh, european uh, yasa syllabus we we do the training according in accordance with yasa programs even the aircraft maintenance uh, license program it's uh, of the same international level so when you have a qualification of that that caliber you can find employment not only in sri lanka but in other countries as well because it's the same standards same quality so we are responsible to maintain that quality now as my my one of the one of the jobs of my responsibilities is that as quality assurance manager we have to ensure that the organization does the program exactly as is required by the authorities right so we maintain the quality that in turns help the students to go into various corners of the world how can you all uh, describe the enthusiasm available here in sri lanka of students to join aviation school i think um, i think sometimes we we though we have tried to reach the reach has not been enough there's still some more Im improvements that can be done uh, one of the ways of achieving that is that we have we are promoting uh, aviation clubs in schools uh, we give support to uh, to uh, to start that and whatever technical know hows exhibitions and so on and then we have been having for a long time what you call a holiday course for the children that is anybody from ages 11 and upwards we have a program which is part 1 2 and 3 because as as dananje mentioned sometimes they think that uh, aviation is only about flying they don't understand that there are so many other affiliated jobs and opportunities and careers available so what we what this program addresses is first it gives an idea of what aviation is all about and then identify okay these areas are available so that as child from from day one will know okay this is where my aptitude is so i'm happy to say most of our uh, young young students have ended up joining us later for one of the programs okay thank you so much for sharing your ideas i'm pretty sure like in later of this program we are going to talk to a few students and your senior It's lecturers good, good, as well yeah. Yeah. about the procedures here in asian aviation and the future what students can expect and about their ambitions as well so thank you so much for giving an overall idea about what the college offers and uh, with that we'll go into a short commercial break we'll be back soon you're watching gen x rise Welcome back to Gen X Y Z, and we are at the Asian Aviation Center in the Ratmalana Airport. And also in the first segment, uh, we were talking with the senior management about the overall view about the courses that they are aligning here in the Asian Aviation Center, and also the demand people have for this course, and about the ambitions and the enthusiasm that the students have. Now, when we talk about the courses available here in this center. Mr Chandram was talking about three different sectors there's flying there's maintenance and there's also designing and engineering so to talk about the designing and engineering part we have two senior lecturers and uh, that is uh, Sarada Mavit 
Mahavitagama. Mahavitagama, Mahavitagama, who is the director of studies and also we have senior lecturer who is Mangala Gunavardhana. Yes. Thank you so much sir for taking the time to join me on the show today. Now to continue with our discussion, um, in the first segment we got an overall view about the courses available and uh, they were talking about the aviation course also. So I want to get to know more about the engineering side of aspects. So I believe that you two are the most uh, prominent people to talk about this subject. So if you could Thank explain. you for giving us this opportunity. And uh, we have at Asian Aviation Center the, under the Aero, uh, Aircraft Engineering Academy, two major areas. One area is towards the uh, aircraft maintenance licensing program, where a person who needs to do the maintenance of the aircraft need to get his qualification and obtain the licenses. For that, we do the required initial training program, which is called as uh, approved maintenance training program. And the second area is we have the uh, collaborative partnership with Kingston University London to deliver a BSc aerospace degree, a three-year program, out of which we deliver two years in Sri Lanka and the students proceed for the third year to obtain the degree in London and complete the degree there. So, uh, Mr. Mangalagunadana is handling that program, that is uh, BSc Aerospace Engineering, and he, we are fortunate to have him here because he is one of our own students who had proceeded to England, obtained the degree and worked there, and came back to Sri Lanka and here with us in the lecture That's panel. right, in the first segment, Mr. Chandram was also talking about a strong alumni, so you're probably one of them. <laughs> uh, yes, um, actually I joined uh, AAC about 20 years ago, 2003, exactly 20 years, now it's 2023. Then I went there and I did my uh, bachelor's degree, and then I did my master's and I was working there as an engineer, then came back, a certain things. So uh, now what we do here is now I uh, coordinate the, the BSc designing program because when it comes to aircraft we have two sides in engineering one is for maintenance one is for designing designing and building aircraft because not only aircraft it's spacecraft so we have we are conducting an aerospace program here so we are the only provider in Sri Lanka right now to do to teach the, the students to how to design from the drawing board how to design and build an aircraft so we conduct the first two years we have a collaboration with Kingston University where I studied and uh, so they have to go there for the third year. So first two years we complete here. And we are proud and, about uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, now we have a lot of uh, students coming from all around the world, especially from African countries, uh, like South Asian countries. So we had uh, several students from Sudan uh, yeah, earlier. Yeah. Now annually we get uh, every year from Maldives, a lot of students uh, yeah. for engineering and flying both. So, uh, yeah. Before now, we get in there, I would like to talk about this place. This is the hangar, and this is mainly where I all conduct the classes. Is that yes, right? we, we have two elements in both the programs. One is the theoretical learning, uh, the classroom activities, and then the hands on practical work. And the theory, what we do to explain the theory into the actual work, we need the aircraft and the model. So, to help the theory, uh, to understand by a, a newcomer, unknown person to get the feel of it. Having the aircraft available is very much easy for us to say, make them understand. Secondly, for, this, uh, for the learning outcomes, we have to meet the number of practical activities as well. So we use this place, we, this, all these aircraft and the facilities available, the engines and all the models we have, to give them that required learning outcomes in a practical, uh, say, actual environment. Yeah, that's important. I believe that the practical knowledge is very important. Having the book knowledge is not enough, yeah, like, especially yeah. when it comes to aircrafts and so yeah. forth. And we at Asian Aviation, we are blessed to have the actual flying operation with us because we have the uh, flying train school. So the students always get the right environment because they are, they are really they are and uh, they get all the uh, engineering as well as actual maintenance is also available for us to see. Now, uh, some students are here doing the practical work in one of the uh, actual aircraft. Yeah. Alright. Mr. Mangala, you were talking about, you know, international students yes, also yes. coming down to Sri Lanka yeah. in order to learn aviation from Asian Aviation yes, Centre. Yes. 
So tell me more about that. Uh, because now uh, in South Asia, we are one of the leading organizations to, to provide the designing, especially the designing, the space designing program. So, uh, so because of that, now like countries like Maldives and some African countries, usually students are coming. Now we have one student right here, so I can introduce uh, one uh, yeah, sure. to you. Hamsan, yeah, are you busy? Yeah, can you uh, speak about uh, your Hello, experience hi, nice here? Hello, hi, nice to meet you. This is nice Amsan from Maldives. Yes, your sir was telling you how you came down from uh, Maldives and you're an international student as well. Tell me a bit about your experience here in Sri Lanka. Why did you come down just to learn aviation? So, my dream was to be an aerospace engineer since childhood. So, I was doing some research to find good colleges to learn about aerospace, to learn about aviation. So while I was doing my research, the one institute that I saw was Asian Aviation Center. And I checked the reviews and I heard some really good things about them, so I decided to join them. How was your experience so far? My experience has been really good. I've learned a lot about aviation, I've learned a lot of knowledge about aviation, about theory, practically, so I've gained a lot of knowledge. Tell me a little bit more about the course and what your ambition is and why do you think that Asian Aviation was the right place for you to learn all of this? Yes, so my course is BSc, Bachelors of Science in Aerospace space with Horns. So what aerospace engineers do is uh, we develop and we design aircrafts. So since I've been obsessed with aircraft, so my end goal is to design them and to understand the physics behind them, to know more knowledge about them. So that's why I chose Asian Aviation. All right, great to hear. Thank you so much, Shamsan, for sharing your ideas. You can carry on yeah. with your work. Thank you, Thank you. <laughs> Well, yeah, you were right. Like, as you said, there are so many international students also yes. coming down here. What is the speciality of, you know, your courses? As you said, Asian Aviation is the only yeah. school that provides everything in a whole. Yeah. Why do you think that's the uh, case? Because now to, uh, maintain, to fly aircraft, to maintain aircraft, there are other institutions also. It's comparatively, I wouldn't say easier, but for designing aspects, you need to have the manpower and the resources to teach up to the, the level where, I mean, uh, companies like Boeing or Airbus, where they, they build aircraft. So the knowledge base which they use so you have to have it here if you want to deliver a certain course. So that's why myself and there are other lecturers coming from London again back to Sri Lanka to sort of develop our nation anyway. So, so we do our contribution here so to build that. Because now we have the knowledge base and if you can look around, we have the biggest hangar in Sri Lanka for a, for a school. For a school, uh, we, have the, we have the biggest hangar with all the tools and aircraft and equipment. So we are equipped with uh, all the resources, uh, human resources, and with the machines also, and the aircraft. So I think that's why we, we are the only provider, because it's not easy for us, uh, someone to just enter into this program. To, to sum up what he said, we have a say, qualified and experienced set of staff from different, different fields. We have them here. Then we have all the required practical uh, facility. And we are in the apron, yeah, we are in the maintenance environment in the Ratman uh, airport in the aircraft maneuvering area. So what better place you have to have to learn what you, have, what you want to do. So that's That's it. right. So if I'm not mistaken, you all have been working here and lecturing students also for the past 10 years. And uh, I would like to get your intake on the student engagement. As far as I noticed, like I also walked around at this school, the majority of them were males. Okay. okay. How, what can you say about the female engagement in this course? Good question coming from a female. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's no difference. Say, we have kept it open and we get st female students. Of course, yes, uh, we have right here at the moment. Uh, not as equal in the number, but they, they are. They are. So we'll uh, have, we'll have uh, uh, the female participation as well to encourage <laughs> <laughs> this uh, your requirement as well as uh, we, are, we are having a say, good number of uh, females with us. Uh, That's these great. Three, yeah. It keep on changing time to time. 
the numbers the, the proportion proportionately they go up and down but no restriction only thing is the women must come forward to choose them that's right <laughs> so as we can see there's a bunch of students working on something here as well that's great to know like yeah, for them to get the first hand experience of dismantling a plane itself so tell me more about your course sir yeah this is seneca aircraft uh, they are uh, the, the the students who are here are aircraft maintenance engineering uh, students from uh, batch 52 because we have been here for about uh, more than say, almost 30 years now and with Kingston uh, this is uh, 20th, 25th, year. 25th, 25th year, 26th year, 25th batch uh, yeah. has just uh, completed their exams. So uh, they are uh, doing a servicing uh, schedule. That is a scheduled uh, servicing. They are practicing it today for the practical work. And there are instructors uh, who are uh, telling them how to do and give them the instructions. And they themselves have to perform it and get the real uh, activities completed. So they are doing a 50 hour inspection here. And uh, we have, uh, as you want to see, the lady participation is there. And uh, we can talk to one of them and uh, yes, get more sure. experience if yes, you want. Sure. Savindi, can you please? Uh, Hi Savindi, Hi. nice to meet you. Thank Sorry you. we had to disturb you in the middle of a it's class. But then. <laughs> so tell me, how has your experience been in Asian Aviation? Well, actually it's been great so far. I'm, um, I'm actually currently in the second year of my course. And right now we're doing like 50 hours services and an inspection in this aircraft. And mostly Institute is great and like uh, we've completed the exams and our goal is to like basically do exams, get the aircraft maintenance license and you know get that and finally become an aircraft maintenance engineer and all with the technical side. Currently normally we do theory and as well as practicals so today is like our workshop and practical day so which is why we're doing this job and as you can see my friends and everyone is doing and uh, she was interested in uh, the female participation in the program. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yes, because the majority I saw here yeah, in the majority school. majority of it, yeah, mostly like if you take pilots from the aviation industry, there's like ladies as well, but not much girls or like females born to participate in this, but it's really interesting and people actually want more females to come to this industry as well because it's not like you can't do it anybody can do it it's like it's as long as you you're interested in it and you're passionate yeah. for it for example uh, in my class we have like two more girls we are all very interested in what we're doing even exams we study together and we do all that and it's been great so far has it always been your passion to get into the engineering side yes it has actually to be honest since I was probably a toddler, I always <laughs> wanted to do uh, aircraft engineering and everything to do with aircrafts. I just love it. Great. Thank you so much, Amanda. No, you can get back to your class. Thank you so much. Thank you thank again. You, thank you. So as you all said, like students are so passionate in learning aviation per se and especially it's good to know that you all have the environment and facilities to treat that. So as lecturers, how can you explain the demand people have for this course? Do you see a lot of people enrolling with Asian Aviation? Yes, uh, of course, uh, any, any given year we are taking about uh, three batches for aircraft maintenance engineering and we get the numbers, the students are there. And uh, for the BSc Aerospace Engineering degree program, one batch per year. And uh, from A levels, they have to join. And for those who have not completed uh, the required uh, educational qualification, they can join the foundation program and have a pathway. Uh, when they complete the foundation program and get through the exams, they get qualified to. We have an aircraft uh, starting up yeah, in the flight line, so that is why I said this is the best environment to have the training going on because everything is here. 
Well, thank you so much for sharing your insights and also getting uh, your students also to talk to us on the show. And uh, I believe that the students who are watching this also, not students, but the young people who are watching this will got a good idea about the engineering segment. So in the, sec uh, the last segment, we'll be talking about the flying uh, course as well. So thank you so much. Yes. So we, have, we have to manufacture the aircraft and we have to maintain the aircraft for yeah. the pilots to fly. That's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you so much flight. again. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, we'll be continuing with our discussion again, but before that, we are going into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon. You're watching Gen XYZ. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we've reached our last segment and in the first two segments we got an overall idea about uh, the Asian Aviation Centre and also in the second segment we were talking about the engineering uh, course here that they are providing and now in the last segment we are going to talk about the flying course that they have here. So for that I would like you to be introduced to Kavin Samaranayaka who is the Chief Theoretical Knowledge Instructor along with uh, two of his students uh, who is Akash Udugama and also Sashmi Silva. Thank you guys for joining me today on Thank the you show. For us. Okay, so Tell me, how has your day been? How is life at Asian Aviation? And uh, how did you get here? Uh, so it has been a good sunny day, so <laughs> it was raining a bit in the morning. Uh, so I've been at Asian Aviation for the past five years. Uh, and I've been serving as a ground instructor. And now we call it theoretical knowledge instructor. Uh, so my job here is to prep the students before they get into the flying section. So teach them the ins and outs of the aircraft, uh, from the engine uh, to how the aircraft flies. And in addition, uh, about every aerodrome in Sri Lanka and the aerodromes that we are going to operate at. Teach them how to navigate, teach them how to communicate. So I prep them, me and my colleagues who are in the ground school staff, we prep them so that they are ready or to go on their first flight and they know what they are doing before they get onto the aircraft. Okay, so these two are your students you are teaching them currently, is it? Yes, uh, so these are my students from my ongoing PPL batch. So that is the first stage of your training course. So uh, it is nice to see every time uh, we get a bunch of students uh, to see their enthusiasm, the youngsters joining. And it's especially it's very nice to see when the students are also very keen uh, for the subject and uh, because after doing it for a while we also prefer when the students can have a proper dialogue and like they're also somewhat well versed and we can see their interest so it becomes much more easier for us to st teach so these two I can uh, I think easily say uh, are one of the more talkative students in our class right. which, is, which is necessary after all communication is one of the three main factors when it comes to flying uh, so yeah, here they are today, so especially for those of you who are, maybe you are keen to join the field, you want to know what it, what it is like, it is better to ask someone who is new to the field to see, uh, get a comparison, especially most of the people who want to join the field, maybe they are a bit scared, they don't know what to expect, right? So having these guys here should clarify most of that doubt and because they can tell you what they what they expected when they joined this field and what it is like now uh, flying and getting through the ground school. Yes, okay, so as he mentioned, like, uh, was it always your passion and your ambition to become a pilot? It has been, it has, it has been. 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 Since From a, a very young age? Yes. yes. Okay, so do you think that we have the opportunity here, and of course, Asian Aviation is providing that opportunity. Has, has it been tough for you to consider piloting as an occupation? Not necessary no, no. because you're very, I'm like passionate about it and stuff, but uh, when you get into here, you get to know what act the reality is. So yeah, it's fun to be here. It, it gets more interesting. Yeah. Like, what people think is flying is just you get on a plane, yeah. you pull on the control column and then start. <laughs> no, it, that's much <laughs> more, more. There's much more. There's like there's a bigger, there's picture. bigger picture. Yeah, It's like a bigger picture here. You get to know about the ins and outs of it, so it's very fascinating but again there's a lot to study yes. a lot <laughs> so to that's study. not something you expect <laughs> but yeah yes. 
How has it been for you? Has it always been um, your core passion to become a pilot and also you being a woman also? Was it hard for you to get into this industry? Did you receive a supporting, a back, a supporting background? Well, uh, I've always wanted this, so it's never been hard to get into. They're obviously very welcoming and everything. But uh, there's a lot of people have this thing where they think that women cannot do that. It's a very male-dominated field. But I feel like now it's very developing and uh, girls have a lot of uh, chances to get in and do their own thing. Uh, most of us, the young people, they don't underestimate girls like that. They are very supportive and it's very nice to have the guys to actually, you know, be with you and all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kavin, what can you tell about the student engagement for this course? Right, uh, so like I mentioned previously, I feel like uh, as an instructor, uh, there is definitely a large portion that you can do. But uh, like the saying goes, you can take the horse to the water, but you can't force the horse to drink the water, right? So we really prefer and we notice uh, students perform much better when they are also engaged uh, in the field and uh, unlike most uh, degrees or diplomas where you just listen to a lecture in a, with about 50 odd students right in this case uh, you'll, ha you'll have about 10 students so it's almost like a one-on-one -on -one class and it is and since uh, it does require a certain significant amount of uh, a reasonable amount of money to get into the field it is a waste what I can say as an instructor it is a waste to not get the full use out of it, right? It is beneficial for everyone if they communicate because now usually there are students who are somewhat introverted when they start, but at the end of the day, if you want to join an airline, you still be, you need to be able to converse, right? So if you know that you have certain weaknesses and all that, this is the place to start, right? From the ground school itself, if you ask questions, you engage with your colleagues, Right? So if you do that, it'll help you build your character in a greater sense. Right? So we actually prefer, we, we encourage students to get involved in these conversations, ask questions. It is uh, the engagement with the students, uh, as, and even for the instructors, it is when we are doing standardization programs, we encourage, we, in, we urge the instructors to make sure they get the students involved in these conversations, make them feel like they deserve to be here. Right? Because it can be overwhelming, like the students said, it like, like <laughs> Akka said, it, everyone thinks you just, you have money, you get into the aircraft, you pull this control column and it starts flying. That is not the case. So it is very important that the students also uh, engage in this process. So have you two had your first hand experience in going for trials already or? No, mm, not no. yet. We are not still yet. in ground school. Just, okay. just about to in ground school. Yeah. And then All right. Start, yes. Okay. With it. So, Kavin, maybe you can uh, pitch in your idea in, of this as well, since you've already had experience in flying as well. What is the best part of it? Mm. Okay, <laughs> that is a tough question. Uh, I suppose it is very subjective uh, what the best part is, but for uh, you, in your opinion, what yeah. do you enjoy? Mm. I think uh, the very first time you go on solo is very memorable for everyone because it's the first time. I think uh, even in the solo flight, at the beginning of the flight, uh, you're so overwhelmed with the work you're supposed to do. Uh, so you're just caught up in that, but there's a certain stage of the flight, we call it the downwind, where uh, there's a bit of a rest period before you have to do the first ever solo landing. Uh, where In that rest period, you wish you want to rest, but then that's when the moment you realize <laughs> my instructor is not there in this aircraft. This is the first time you're going alone. It, throughout the first stages, you don't realize because you're so caught up with the workload. But once you're in that rest area, you realize, okay, this is, this is for real. <laughs> this, this is me flying this aircraft. I think that was the most uh, surreal experience. But on a close second would be also my very first solo navigational cross country where you uh, go to a, a destination that is not your home aerodrome. So I think uh, both of that, those were the like the surreal moments for me. Uh, but you know, every day like flying is uh, you can't really explain it. You have to be there <laughs> to really uh, understand what I'm talking about. I don't think any amount of words will mount to what you feel when you get into the aircraft and you actually get airborne. For you to also have, has there been an inspiration for you to get into this field? 
It's, diff- it's from a small child. Yeah. Good day, probably say because I like planes. Like even today, whenever you see something going in the sky, you'll always go out and check ah, it. Ah, definitely. It's definitely <laughs> happen. Like it's common. It's it's with everyone. So that's gonna kind of like peak interest anyways. You know, as a small childhood, you see something from you're like, oh, what's this? It's a plane. <laughs> and you get interested on what's a plane. So that's yeah. That's what Is I it say. the same with you? Uh, yeah, mostly. And also, I, when I was very young, I saw this the, on Women's Day, all the women pilots taking their aircraft on their own. So that obviously inspired me to be like, I want to do that too. <laughs> yeah. So that great. So, uh, Kavin, when people enroll with uh, Asian Aviation or any flying school here in Sri Lanka. Uh, what is the percentage of people actually having the chance to become a pilot? Right, so uh, it also goes down to first, uh, if they are talking about the national career or whether they want to be a pilot in general, right? So if you talk about the opportunities, because this course, it's not like it's not like a linear two-year course where we can say the people that have started who have now joined an airline or something like that because some people drop out halfway, there are people joining halfway through. So what I can say is that uh, considering the opportunities that they have, right? If you're in Sri Lanka, you'll have Sri Lankan Airlines. If you want to go overseas, you have Trans Maldivian. Then there are self-sponsored courses such as Weirjet and places like that. So the opportunities are endless. It's just that uh, you have to figure out what you want and you have to go out there exploring what are your options. Uh, it's very difficult. Sorry, it's very difficult to put a number onto how much of a conversion rate is there to be an airline pilot. It is a lot of work, uh, and uh, I know most of my colleagues even they have dropped either halfway. So yeah, the, if you have the commitment, however, you can. I feel you can uh, stay in the field and end up following your dream to be a pilot. Mm-hmm. So tell me more about your experience here at Asian Aviation, Asian Aviation. and your time with Kavin also as your lecturer. <laughs> what have you all been learning so far and how can you describe that? It's been pretty good so yes. far. Like nothing's gone wrong. wrong. Everything everything yeah. has been set like no setbacks yes. at all. It was pinpoint perfect for me. And also the instructors are really nice to you, so they let you know when you're when what to do. Everything is given to you and it's like really nice to have instructors like that. It's very welcome they are very welcoming. It's nice. All right. It's a good experience. So, uh, Kavin, tell me more about the opportunities available. Now, once they get their license, what is their next step? Right, so uh, the license initially breaks down into about, uh, we have about uh, three licenses technically. So, you get your PPL first, uh, then you have your CPL IR, IR with the multi engine rating, then you have your frozen ATPL, which is usually the minimum requirement now. Uh, to join most of the national carriers or any commercial airline. And so once you get your license uh, and your multi-engine rating, then depending on the airline that you want to apply, because there are certain airlines now, if you take things like uh, the Cinnamon Air over here, right, you need to have a float rating, so which is not uh, which is not a basic component of your license. So if you want to pursue a career over there, you need to get your float rating. So like I said previously, uh, you need to figure out what you want to do, right? And then do whatever is necessary to get those requirements sorted so you can apply to the airline that you want to uh, work with. Okay, great. Thank you so much. We are reaching the end of our program as well. But before we end, um, another question. like, What should uh, students or people who want to enroll with aviation school be prepared before they enter? Financial-wise, right. mentally-wise, and something that they need to expect? Yeah, so one thing, yes, like you said, finances are very important because uh, because when you're flying, you need to be able to fly consistently, right? Because halfway through, if you don't have the funds, uh, then you won't be scheduled for a while, right? Therefore, you're going to lose touch, right? So then you have to do more refresher flights, things like that. So I would actually urge anyone who wants to pursue this, like as someone who has gone through this whole process, your finances are very important, right? As uh, it is as important as doing what is necessary to get to your dream, you need to prepare your finances properly and your determination is of utmost importance. No matter what you have, uh, if you don't have the dedication, uh, it is a tough field. You, it's very difficult to cut it if you don't have the determination. Another thing uh, which uh, is 
not really highlighted. Now, I want to say anyone in any field, whether you have followed commerce stream, science stream, doesn't matter. Once you get here, we'll teach you from the very beginning. And depending on uh, what the students need, we'll cater to them individually if that is required. So the stream that you follow is really not that important. As, you know, however, having things like maths and physics does help. But I wouldn't say it is mandatory that you do any of that. Uh, so that part is definitely there. You need to keep in your mind that this is not just flying. You need to study, you need to work hard, you need to go through all of those exams. So that is uh, another uh, factor you got to keep in mind. Uh, another thing uh, which would be ideal if, uh, is that you being able to communicate properly in English, right? Uh, so before you come here, if you know you have certain weaknesses, you are better off investing a bit more time polishing those skills rather than coming here because then what will happen is you're, you, you will find it difficult to progress in your flying not because you can't fly, because you have other weaknesses that are not related to flying, right? So you get anxious about those things. So if you know you have certain weaknesses, best thing, you polish them beforehand, right? So once you come here, you only need to focus about your flying. Those are the key things I've noticed in students so far where they did not expect. Uh, another thing is, of course, your medicals, but most of the, when they join, when they're about 16 or 17, medicals really aren't a problem but if it's someone uh, relatively senior they also need to consider their medical situation as well to get your licenses yeah those are the main things i mean i think that's an important point you said because a lot of people have in mind that thinking that they should either do mathematics or science in right. order to get into this field but right. important point that you say, it doesn't matter about the stream exactly. that you select that you all are starting from scratch precisely well, we've reached the end of our program, uh, so thank you so much for sharing your ideas and your experience here at Asian Aviation as well. And uh, good luck with all of your exams, and thank, thank you. you again, Kavin, for taking thank the time. Thank you so us. much. And uh, that was our episode on Gen XYZ. We will be back again next week with another uh, issue or topic relating to the youth. So just in case you couldn't watch us on air, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Stay safe and have a good night. <laughs>